How does the Bitcoin blockchain actually work and can it ever be turned off? Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system worth over $1.7 trillion and used by millions of people worldwide. Today, I'm going to give you the simple, crystal clear explanation behind the most powerful computer network on Earth in a way anyone can understand. To understand Bitcoin, we need to start with one word, ledger. A ledger is a list of transactions, who paid who, how much, and when. Your bank keeps a ledger, companies keep ledgers, governments keep ledgers. Your bank statement is your personal ledger, but all traditional ledgers share the exact same flaw. They're private. Only insiders can see them, so mistakes, fraud, or corruption can easily be hidden. Bitcoin flips this upside down. In 2009, an anonymous developer using the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin and introduced the idea of a decentralized public ledger, meaning anyone on Earth can view the entire history of Bitcoin transactions. Decentralized means no single entity controls the money. Everyone collectively verifies the system. Centralized means one authority controls it. Bitcoin is the opposite of that. This public ledger doesn't show personal details, only wallet addresses, amounts, and timestamps. A public wallet address is like your bank account number. It tells people where to send Bitcoin, but it doesn't reveal your personal identity. However, because Bitcoin is fully transparent, anyone can see the balance and transaction history of that address, just not who it belongs to. Your wallet generates this address using cryptography. It's just a long string of random numbers and letters. And importantly, a Bitcoin wallet does not store Bitcoin. It stores the keys that let you spend Bitcoin stored on the blockchain. Your Bitcoin never leaves the blockchain. This decentralized public ledger is revolutionary because it becomes extremely hard for anyone, including governments or corporations, to hide financial corruption or secretly create more money. Speaking of money creation, Bitcoin has a maximum supply of 21 million coins. It cannot be printed, inflated, or devalued. In a world where governments create money out of thin air and everyday people work hard for that money, a currency that cannot be printed or manipulated changes everything. Now, the Bitcoin ledger is verified by tens of thousands of independent computers around the world called nodes. Nodes check every transaction, every block, and enforce every rule completely independently. This prevents something called double spending, where someone tries to spend the same Bitcoin twice. This global network of computers and data is called the blockchain. Nobody controls the blockchain, not a bank, not a company, not a government, not even Satoshi. It's a rule-based protocol enforced by thousands of nodes worldwide. Now, let's actually look at the blockchain happening in real time. This is Mempool Space, the most widely used Bitcoin blockchain explorer. These explorers are free websites that display live data from the public blockchain. Everything you see here is the real-time heartbeat of Bitcoin. At the top, you'll see a row of blocks. Each block contains thousands of Bitcoin transactions bundled together. Purple blocks are confirmed, permanent and unchangeable. Green blocks are predictions, blocks miners will likely create next. Each block is like a page in Bitcoin's permanent public record. Every 10 minutes or so, a new block is verified and added to the chain. 10 minutes is the sweet spot, fast enough for global payments, slow enough to keep the network secure. At the top of each purple block, you'll see its block height, the number of blocks that have been mined since Bitcoin began. The first block ever mined is called the Genesis block. Inside a block, you'll see the fee rate, SAT per VB, Satoshi's per virtual byte. A virtual byte measures how much space a transaction takes up in a block. SATVB is the fee rate people paid to get included. At the time of recording, the average fee rate is roughly 1 SAT per VB, which works out to about 13 cents USD for a typical transaction, though this can vary depending on transaction size and network traffic. Recently, fees have hovered around 60 cents. Next, you'll see megabytes used. 
how full the block is. Bitcoin blocks typically hold between one and four megabytes of transaction data, depending on the types of transactions and SegWit compression. Below that, number of transactions, usually between 2300 and 3500. Next, timestamp. And below that, the mining pool that mined the block, meaning their machines were the first to solve the puzzle and add this block to the chain. To understand how these blocks are created, we need to talk about nodes and miners. Nodes are the backbone of Bitcoin security. A node is a computer running Bitcoin Core, the software that verifies all Bitcoin transactions and blocks. Nodes enforce Bitcoin's consensus rules, which are the shared rules that define what valid Bitcoin looks like. Nodes trust no one. They verify everything. Nodes enforce rules like no fake transactions, no double spending, no invalid blocks, no exceptions. If a miner cheats, nodes reject the block instantly. This is why Bitcoin has no CEO, no central server, and no single point of failure. There are tens of thousands of nodes worldwide, in homes, offices, data centers, remote regions, even running on solar panels. Estimates range from 40,000 to over 60,000. To shut Bitcoin down, you'd have to shut down every node on Earth at the same time. Good luck. Now let's talk about miners, the machines that build new blocks. Miners use specialized hardware called ASICs, computers designed to perform trillions of guesses per second to solve a cryptographic puzzle. This puzzle is called proof of work. Proof of work turns real world electricity into digital security. It makes Bitcoin extremely expensive to attack, but cheap to use. Here's how mining works. Miners take transactions waiting in the mempool. They place them into a block template. They run all that data through a cryptographic function called SHA-256. This outputs a hash, a digital fingerprint. They must find a hash that meets a specific target. This takes trillions of guesses. Mining farms run thousands of machines 24 seven, throwing out trillions of hash guesses until one machine finds a valid solution. The miner who finds the correct hash earns the block reward, new Bitcoin, and all transaction fees inside the block. This is how new Bitcoin enters circulation. But here's something most people don't know. Every four years, the block reward is cut in half. This is the halving. 50 Bitcoin, 25 Bitcoin, 12.5 Bitcoin, 6.25 Bitcoin, and soon to be 3.125 Bitcoin. This continues until all 21 million Bitcoin are mined. Now, how does Bitcoin keep block time stable at 10 minutes? Every 2016 blocks, roughly every two weeks, Bitcoin adjusts the mining difficulty. If blocks were solved too fast, difficulty increases. If they were solved too slow, difficulty decreases. This self-regulating system keeps Bitcoin running perfectly without any central authority. Now that you understand nodes, miners, proof of work, hashes, the halving, and difficulty, let's follow a real Bitcoin transaction from start to finish. Here's what actually happens when you send Bitcoin. You send Bitcoin from your wallet. The transaction is broadcast to the network. It enters the mempool, Bitcoin's waiting room. Miners pick transactions based on fee rate, or SAT per VB. Your transaction gets added to a block template. Miners race to solve the proof of work puzzle. The first miner to find a valid hash proposes the block. Nodes verify it independently. If valid, it becomes part of the blockchain forever. Your transaction is now confirmed permanently. It cannot be changed, reversed, forged, or deleted. How long does this take? Most Bitcoin transactions confirm in 10 to 60 minutes, depending on your fee and how busy the network is. Larger payments may require multiple confirmations for extra security. On mempool.space, you can see the minimum fee needed right now, how many transactions are waiting, and how congested the network is. Below, you'll see a live graph showing how many new transactions are entering the mempool each hour. The height and color of each spike show the traffic level and fee pressure. 
To the left is the tree map. Each square is an unconfirmed transaction. Bigger squares equals larger transaction size. Colors show the fee rate. Green is cheap, yellow or orange is expensive. This entire screen is Bitcoin's bloodstream. You're watching the network breathe. Now, the final question. Why is Bitcoin unstoppable? Because anyone can run a node, anyone can mine, no one controls the network, no one can block a valid transaction, no one can counterfeit Bitcoin, no one can change the rules by force, no one can shut it down, it runs on tens of thousands of independent computers, it cannot be printed or devalued. Bitcoin has no headquarters. Bitcoin has no CEO. Bitcoin has no off switch. As long as one node remains online anywhere on Earth, even running on a solar panel in the desert, the Bitcoin blockchain survives. That is how the Bitcoin blockchain works. And that is why it may be the most important invention in the history of money.